Good evening, everybody, and welcome to J Live. I'm Joey Barron, the Artistic Director of the Jewish Arts Collaborative, and it's great to be with you tonight. J Live is our series of virtual cultural experiences that bring us together to explore and celebrate the diverse world of Jewish art, culture, and creative expression. We're bringing you bite-sized conversations with the best Boston area talent. As always, if you have questions during the conversation, please share them in the Q&A section at the bottom of your screen, and we will ask as many as time allows. So let's get down to business. Our special guest tonight is the extraordinary violinist, Yeko Miranda El Malay, whom you may have seen performing around the region with her own ensemble, or as a member of the Klezmer Conservatory Group. Nico, we've known each other a while, and whenever I try to describe your music to people, <laughs> I, uh, I, I, I talk, and it's like this crazy fusion of klezma world and classical music, and, and I hear it every time, and I'm wondering, how did you come to have so many musical influences? <laughs> um, wow, that's a really good question. Um, so I grew up in a pretty diverse family. Um, my mother grew up in France um, with the Jewish family. My father's from El Salvador. Um, both my, my grandfather and my mother's side and my father's side were musicians. And there's just art, we're just artists. That's all we are, we're just artists. And um, so there was just a lot of influence from both from different countries, from different cultures, just having a lot of musical and creative influences in my home. Um, and my parents just exposed me to lots of world music so um yeah and then i grew up in cambridge and it was just like all mixtures of people so i think that's just where i got it from it's just in my dna nice um so since it's so hard to describe i think we're yeah. much better <laughs> off listening to it so uh do you want to talk about the song we're going to hear oh sure yeah so um Okay, this first song is called The Maroon, and um, it's a nigun. And I heard it from an album um, that was like, took place in like Jerusalem, like with all men singing this nigun. It sounds super, you know, orthodox, and it's very traditional. Um, and uh, I just wanted to kind of incorporate like a Middle Eastern kind of a sound with percussion. Um, so we kind of like made it a little edgier because I just, I love, I love that sound. And um, about two months ago, or maybe it was about a month ago, we did a Facebook live concert in my yard. And um, this is the video that my neighbor caught on his phone and it turned out really cool. And we have like lights there. It's got this like Nirvana vibe, like when they did their, their unplugged concert. Um, and <laughs> And there was like a thunderstorm and, and everything. So I hope you guys enjoy it. I love it. Let's hear it. I love playing it. Thank you. 
indeed. Uh, <laughs> so what? Yeah, you know, just a, it's a beautiful piece of music. So. Um, oh my and, god! I could never do this without Michael and Grant. I mean, they are just. I love them so much, both of them. They become like family to me. Yeah, they're really mainstays of the Jewish music world here. It's like Definitely. This, it's, um, so that was like one of these backyard concerts. You did, I think you did two of them I, that I've seen. Um, and two, yep. And I'm wondering, as a musician, how are you dealing with like the quarantine how are you dealing with the isolation and, and how you know how are you how are you finding positivity in that um you know truthfully um this has been like the first time since i can remember that i've had some time to actually get a little creative um, I've spent, you know, after college, you know, gigging and stuff, not really knowing where my focus was, you know, having kids and, you know, having small babies that took up a lot of my time. And, you know, they're a, li they're a little old, they're still small now. So they do take up quite a bit of time. But um, I have put a lot of effort into, you know, trying to like think of a little bit more, like reflect, do a lot of self-reflection, which has actually um, been really helpful um, creatively. And what I'm getting at with this is that, I, you know, I've taken up paint, I started taking up painting, I started painting, okay? That was one thing to kind of, kind of start like the juices flowing. And then from there, I, I would always have these melodies humming in my head for years. I always had things in my head and I just thought everyone walks around with melodies in their head. But I decided, you know, maybe I should try writing something. And so I started writing. I started, you know, compiling melodies and then putting them together. And so I, uh, you know, I've been writing actually. And what I've noticed is all the influences of my upbringing, Listen, you know, growing up with a, a Latin father, you know, from Central America, I heard a lot of music from Latin America. And then also from my mother's side, just hearing a lot of French music and Jewish music and like just, but with like, uh, you know, Spanish influence too. So things like tangos and then all my influence with all the Jewish music that I've been doing for all these years just kind of starts to creep in too. So I feel like I've been composing songs with sort of like a medley of, of all that culture that, I, that I've acquired throughout the throughout my life and um, and, and I kind of had the courage to put out you know a waltz that I that I wrote um, and um, I've been writing some other stuff um, which I, I would actually like to start incorporating my own compositions and maybe Michael or Grant's into the band so that original music um, and also all the other stuff we do um, and I you know so anyway, yeah. <laughs> okay, so we're going to hear a waltz? Oh, yeah, we're going to hear a waltz right now. We're going to play a waltz um, that I wrote. It's the first thing I've ever put out. And um, I called it Les Arrignes, which in French means spiders. And that has a connotation for me of good luck. So it's called the spiders, Les Arrignes. Nice. Well, let's go listen to the spiders. Okay. We'll call repeats. We're just gonna. You can even play the melody. Oh, she's gonna to. let me play the melody even. <laughs> Test my sight reading. I think she should do an intro too. Oh, that's right. Like a Doina intro or a. Whatever intro. Whatever inspired you. That's the tempo. So whenever. I'll... Yeah. 
perfect ending with the fire siren behind me too. It's great. <laughs> you couldn't have timed it better. Um, so uh, usually this would be when we take uh, questions from the audience, but there don't seem to be any right now. So I'm going to make a request instead. Okay. Usually, usually when I make a request, it's for a piece of music. But yeah. in this case, um, I know from firsthand experience that you are a pretty good tarot card reader. <laughs> and I'm wondering, job. <laughs> um, I'm wondering if you could like pull a card and, and give us a, give it its outlook for all of us who are here listening to you. Oh, okay. An outlook. So I'm just going to generally just going to say, what is something that we need to know or some good information for us right now, universally, with everything going on in the world? Wow, this is really interesting. Um, the card I pulled, if you can see it over here. I can get into this deck a little bit, but um, what's interesting about this card, and it just feels really significant, first of all, it's 10 of discs. It's it usually discs represent things that are earthly, like matters of money, financial gain. But for me, this, this feels like, you know, we're going to be, we might be struggling for a while, you know, and there might be some difficulties. And I don't just mean financially, I just mean like, just with feeling like we're grounded, but things will eventually settle. They they will, and there's a, there's a lot of richness richness to be taken that will that will come our way. But what's interesting about this card is I know for a fact that when Aleister Crowley designed this card, he he designed this representing the like the Kabbalah's tree of life, and there's actually some Hebrew letters in there. It says Raphael over there. So, if I was taking this as like some sort of wisdom how I would for myself and for the people, I would say like, hold on to what's important to you. Hold on to things that have real richness and value, not necessarily money, but things like family, um, you know, stability, peace of mind, the things that kind of create wholeness and hold and value that. And that's what I would hold on to and, and think about that and hold that in your heart. Um, Cause that's really what matters. It's building that for your life and building that for the future, not to get off track. It, it actually feels very positive to me when I, when I pull this card, it, it, to remind people of what's really important. Great. I hope that was helpful. <laughs> That's great. It's great. Yeah. You know, we can never have too many reminders to just stay grounded in this world. That's stay great. Grounded and hold on to what mat family matters. Family, yeah. family, you know, or you consider family, you know, not everyone's family is best, best for them, but what is, what is family to you? What is of, of importance to you? What keeps you grounded? Um, okay. And, and before we wrap up, there yeah. were a couple questions. Uh, oh, cool. But I wanted you to know most of them were comments about how delightful this is from people sitting on their porches with a glass of wine. So you should be <laughs> very happy with oh, that. Oh, I wish I had my wine too. <laughs> um, one question that, uh, showed up, which I think is just a fun story, is how did you get associated with Stevie Wonder? Oh, <laughs> um, well, um, a friend of mine, I was actually in New York doing a show, um, a recap of Schlemiel, because I had been a part of Schlemiel um, in New York, and so we were do I was in New York um, with Yiddish folk scene, and I got a call from my friend Tara, who's a wonderful violinist, and um, she said, hey, Yeko, we need a, we need we need another violinist for the Song of the Key of Life concert that's happening at TD Garden tomorrow night. And I was with Grant, and I was like, Grant, we are driving back tonight because I am going to play that show. <laughs> so, <laughs> so that's how I, I got called for it from from another friend of mine. We were we were in on it together, and that was awesome because the beginning of the album is like super heavy on the strings. Nice. Yeah. Nice. Okay. Well, we do have to wrap up, but okay. before we close. Uh, Please note, everyone, that the next J Live will be Monday, August 24th at noon for a studio conversation with Judaica artist Fran Addison. And the next J Live music will be Tuesday, September 15th at 7 p.m.
when to get us in the mood for Tashlik, we'll meet Boston, another Boston-based violinist, but a former National Parks artist in residence, Rachel Panditch. And last but not least, as the JR tagline says, let culture connect us. To make this possible, we rely on generous community support like yours. If you enjoy the J Live series, please consider donating. You'll find links to donate to J Arts and to support Yako in the chat. And I can't stress enough how important it is to support the arts right now. Yako, this has been great. Thank you. Thank Thanks, everyone you. for being here. And don't forget to follow J Arts on Instagram and Facebook. And stay well, everyone. Thank you.